Have you heard about rewilding? Rewilding is a form of eco-restoration and conservation, protecting or creating areas where nature can do its thing. It's about the birds and the bees. Hello, I'm Alexia. I'm a volunteer at Voices of Wentworth, and it's my joy to speak to people who are doing wonderful things in our community. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this beautiful land, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to elders past and present. Today, I have the pleasure of chatting to Barbara Schaefer. Barbara is a landscape architect with a wealth of experience and has recently formed a new community group to transform our grass verges to native gardens. So Barbara, thank you, welcome. We'd thank love you. to hear what prompted you and what your hopes are for this community and beyond. <laughs> Big questions. <laughs> thank you, Alexia. It's great to talk to you. First and foremost, I'm a mad keen gardener. <laughs> and um, at the time of COVID, you know, when we were home, I thought, wouldn't it be just wonderful to run out of space, you know, in, in my little sort of courtyard garden, wouldn't it be great to sort of take over the street and plant, <laughs> you know, a habitat garden on the verge. And I was very aware that um, Waverley Council were promoting this idea. They had put out a, um, a draft verge policy, which I'd seen, which I'd commented on, and I thought, this is terrific, I'm going to experiment. So I think it was March 2019, at the start of COVID, I began sort of square metre by square metre, you know, lifting up the lawn on our verge. And slowly but surely, I you know, started saying hello to people who I didn't know before, young, old, you know, pets, poodles, and I started to, <laughs> to make a whole lot of new friends on the street, which was really lovely. And people were quite inspired. And, um, you know, over a period of six months, we lifted up most of the turf in the verge and you know, very blessed because we have these five meter wide verges and, you know, which extend along the whole extent of the street. And I just could not, you know, every time I drive down, I think, you know, wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be amazing if Brighton Boulevard became, you know, like a wildlife corridor? That's all I see. One verge is 20 square meters. There's lots of blocks of flats, you know, it's the equivalent. I haven't actually done the maths, but it's the equivalent, you know, of like thousands of square meters of habitat. And we know that biodiversity loss is one of the key things that is impacting, you know, internationally, nationally, and locally. So I thought this is just such a great opportunity also to use this as a demonstration project to illustrate to the community how we can really bring back the birds and the bees into our, um, you know, into the places where we live. I was actually also incredibly amazed at how quickly everything was growing. And Essentially, like I used locally sourced, local provenance species. So they were things that would have grown naturally in our area and they required minimal water. And the garden just began to flourish with, you know, obviously one had to do a little bit of weeding. And then I became aware that Waverley Council had a grant program that was going. And I um, did a letterbox drop. <laughs> to the community of my own bat because I noticed that there was a lot of interest and I did a little pamphlet and I said is there anybody who's interested in you know transforming their verge you know in our street I just went to you know the block our block and said you know if you're interested in being involved in a project which is looking at you know lifting up grass monocultures and you know bringing our verges to life you know come let's meet on the verge at you know was sometime last year and everybody came and there was great excitement and enthusiasm so we collectively we selected a double verge which is approximately 100 square meters which is you know the size of a tiny it could potentially be the size of a tiny forest ultimately i put in a grant to waverley council asking them if we could transform you know grass monoculture back into you know urban habitat gardens and I asked for $5,000 and that was basically to do, I think it was like 500 square meters of verge. And they only gave me $2,000 and just as well, because <laughs> it's a start. It's a very big task. You know? So that enabled us to do um, two guns, which is approximately, I think it's, yeah, it's about 
190 square meters, which is actually a fair bit of additional habitat to the street. So essentially we've, we've got this grant, uh, you know, we've got a community on board. So the idea is really literally verge by verge, we can, you know, bring our streets to life. So it's like an incremental project, little by little. And already, you know, within the municipality of Waverley, there's lots of fantastic things that are happening. You know, if you just start looking, people are growing food, people are, you know, planting their verges in different ways. But primarily what interested me, even although I'm mad keen on growing food, was to rather do something which was manageable. You know, in this instance outside, and especially, you know, in this coastal environment where it's quite windy and salty, you know, growing food actually requires sort of much more intense care. Yes. And I thought, you know, we could start off by doing something which was, you know, fairly manageable. So that's like a very long answer to... <laughs> I think it's interesting that um, even a very small urban green space can support a huge amount of diversity, um, especially of our most minute species, all of the things that then the birds feed on. And I also love the thought that these small spaces, as you link them together, um, and you mentioned the word corridor, that we start to create this passage where um, the animals can move and pollinate and do their thing. And I think that that's wonderful. And I must say that when I first met you, you very kindly and um, quite excitedly said to me, come and let me show you what happens when I open my gate. And very <laughs> sweetly, you took me and you said, I open my gate and I look at my native garden. And I thought, yeah, I get it. And you said, look at the bees, the bees were all buzzing around and the butterflies were going. <laughs> And even though it's a tiny spot, as you say, it's the verge, it's not a big, big garden, but you feel that it's alive. Whereas when you look at what we usually have as a verge, it's not very alive at all. And you're not using pesticides or fertilizer on, on these um, you know, native gardens. If it's successful, it doesn't really involve much human activity at all. The whole idea is to create this ecosystem that's self-sustaining and um, and that just kind of ticks along and we can just enjoy it. <laughs> Even at night, you know, when you go and have a look in the, um, you know, in the plants that are flowering, you know, all these night pollinators, oh, which I was wow. never, <laughs> yeah, like tiny little white moths, yeah, working day and night. But um, yeah, I really do think that Verge Gardens are, um, you know, that this that project like this has got legs for so many reasons. The way it brings people together, that's one of the other aspects which I just really, really love is the, the social cohesion that's actually developing out of this project. And, and I think also what's so beautiful about it is that cross-generational aspect of it. You know, you have young people, you have older people, and that whole idea of creating something together. Like I even noticed when we did you know, when we lifted up the turf on the verge, you know, across the way in preparation for the planting, there was such a great feeling amongst the people, you know, this feeling like, yeah, we're in it together, you know, this community of people who might not necessarily have even spoken to one another. This is all about um, not just the well-being of our environment, but also our yeah. own personal emotional well-being we love to come together and work on projects as a community it brings pride of place as well to feel that your area is, is looks good and is being well looked after so the three councils in in the Wentworth electorate are all have all got programs on um, that some of them offer free plants as well so there's, there's plenty of resources for people to get involved if they want to. I've been doing another fantastic project, which is largely with Willara Council, which is under the banner of a not-for-profit that I'm developing called Tree Rights. I don't know if I mentioned this to you. And, you know, Tree Rights is, it's about enabling the general public to plant tiny forests on public land to commemorate and celebrate rites of passage. So oh, birth, okay. deaths, marriages, and I've done six or seven plantings with them already. And it's just, so that's really working on public land and helping them develop the wildlife corridor that goes from the gap in Vaucluse all the way through to Waverley. So we've been working on Lighthouse Reserve and Signal Reserve. And um, yeah, it's just, it's really, it's been a fantastic project. And in that instance, you know, it's council provides the plants 
And what I do is, you know, I've been bringing groups of people together around, you know, different important moments in their life. And, um, you know, that has just been really satisfying. Um, I'm in the process of developing a website where there will be expressions of interest for people who want to, and that's why I was in Dan Gog, <laughs> because I'm doing a tiny forest installation on a piece of degraded farmland where we're planting a hundred square meter tiny forest. So I've been collecting you know, newspaper and cardboard and we went up there to, because <laughs> we didn't want to use chemicals to, as a way of actually managing the kakuyu. And what kind of plants are you planting in a tiny forest? Well, that's again, you know, the all three strata. So basically grasses, shrubs and trees of locally sourced, local provenance plants that, you know, are suitable for that area. This is actually another opportunity. I got a grant through Planet Arc really? as part of their National Tree Day initiative. You know, with, you know my collaborator in there is a woman called Jan Ryan who's you know, a fantastic innovator in her own right. If somebody wants to start up their own kind of rewilding community, where would they start? In the good old days, you know, I was a bit of a, what you'd call a guerrilla gardener. But, <laughs> but actually, I think it's, it's great to get permission so, and to work in collaboration, because as you quite rightly say, councils, especially in our municipality or in our electorate, are really, really on board. And they, um, yeah, are looking for people to assist in the process. So you were talking about the Living Corridor Program, which is about, you know, enabling lo the local community to transform what might have been sort of, you know, English gardens into habitat gardens. So they provide the plants. So I think it's about going onto a council website, understanding what it is that they're doing, and then working within, and I wouldn't even call it the constraints, working within the opportunities that are actually being provided by, you know, I think Randrick's another council here, the time is right and ripe, and I think that there's lots of opportunities. So, and I think, you know, even in the smallest space where we live, I've got courtyard garden, you know, and I put a banksia in a tub, I've got eucalypts in tubs, and you see the birds like coming in as the banksia start flowering, you know, they're in pots, yeah, the birds just come. You can do it. One doesn't have to be a purist because even, you know, one prefers sort of like, you know, salvias are amazing bird attractors and bee attractors. You know, any flowering plant will attract, um, you know, birds, bees, moths, ladybugs. You know, it's all, it doesn't actually only have to be native, but in terms of like biodiversity loss, you know, native species are obviously better. Yes. But um, in that context, but I think um, it does. And that's the whole thing. You know, it doesn't we can operate at every scale. And that's what I love about this project. You know, it's manageable. But when you think about the cumulative benefit of verge by verge, you know, like it's extraordinary. All of a sudden, a street becomes a corridor and um, we have our own tiny forest in a way. Yeah. A nat native forest. Yeah. Well, it's um, amazing what you've started. Um, it does take someone to set the example, and you've certainly done that. You've created something that stops people when they walk by, and um, and uh, you're happy to answer the questions, which is lovely, and you're sharing your expertise, which we really appreciate. It's, it's a fantastic project. Um, there's some great apps now as well, if you're interested in bird watching. I've seen where you can upload the birds that you spot in your garden so there's I think that's another great way for communities to get involved and to get excited about what they're yeah. seeing because as you say there's lots of apps there's like iNaturalist and you can start uploading you know what we see and and we can monitor the changes you know at the moment with grass verge we've got very little but over time we'll be able to monitor the changes and see the different species that perhaps visit us that we mightn't have seen before great way to involve kids for them to understand the importance of of their patch, their little patch, and what they how can they can they can contribute. Well, thank That's... you so much. It's been super interesting, really very encouraging, and I'm sure people are going to be inspired. And I feel this is the start of a of a movement movement that will roll out. Yeah, some of the young people that were involved created the Instagram site called Rewild Bondi. And, um, you know, hopefully we will progressively start, um, yeah, adding all the different 
things that are happening in our you know in our local environment onto that site. What I'm what I'm really keen to do is just to create a movement around this, and um, to get as many people involved as possible. And as you say, I'm absolutely open and willing to take questions to help. And you know, I kind of have the experience, and I'd love to work with people to um, yeah to rewild their patch be it their garden or their verge. Well, we thank you so much for being the rewild champion and <laughs> encouraging us and showing us the way. I'm really excited about what I've seen so far. Thank you so much, Barbara. Um, I will add notes and links to all of the resources that Barbara has mentioned. And um, please get in contact with us if you'd like to know more or go check out the Instagram. And I think Tree Rights will have a website at some point, you mentioned. That's correct, yes. Okay, yeah. so we'll keep people up to date. Under construction. Yeah. Under construction, okay. So that's all from us. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you to our listeners. If you'd like to know more about these Voices of Wentworth, you can check out our website on voicesofwentworth.org. We are a nonpartisan community group. We're volunteer run. If you'd like to nominate someone doing great work in your community or your community group, please do get in touch as we'd love to chat and spread the good word. Thanks so much, Barbara. See you Thank on you. the verge. Cheers. Bye.